So, Sjogren's can attack your brain, attack your nerves, and attack your blood vessels in your brain. <clears throat> so, these areas of hyperopacity are caused when the lymphocytes attack the blood vessels, the smallest little capillaries, which results in inflammation. Inflammation on the inside lowers the amount of space that the blood can travel through. And I believe scar tissue occurs, which shows up um, less see-through on the MRI or CT scan, which is what is meant by opaqueness, areas of hyper opaqueness. And so this is where scarring is occurring. And that scarring doesn't go away, um, but it can increase on, when you're um, having a flare where your blood vessels are under attack again. And my spots or areas of hyperopacity have increased through the years, both in size and in number. In the white matter, <clears throat> you have mainly nerves. So these capillaries that are under attack and having inflammation in them are feeding the nerves. So if they can't do their job well, they don't end up feeding the nerves with everything that the nerves need in order to stay healthy and function well. So this can lead to a decrease in neurological functioning which could be neuropathy, where you're feeling that tingling and burning sensation in your feet or on your face or in other parts of your body, where you're having migraines, even where you're having a decreased uh, sensation. I've had scrapes on my arms that were pretty significant that I didn't even know was occurring and didn't even know I had until I visualized it, saw it, and went, oh, gee, now that hurts. Now I can feel that. Um, I also have that brain fog that occurs, the nerve impulses being slower, and so it takes longer to process, and for the body to go, ouch, something just hurt me. Um, and so that's my understanding of the white matter disease. Now, what distinguishes Sjogren's spots from MS spots is the way these spots are oriented in space. There is a difference. And I am linking uh, a video presented by a neurologist about exactly what white matter disease is and how it affects the body and the difference between MS lesions in the brain, which are these spots, and Sjogren's spots. Um, she does a fantastic job of making it easy to understand. And it really made a big difference in me understanding what was actually causing what seemed to me like beginnings of dementia. Um, now I understand it much better. And so when these symptoms are increasing and I'm having a lot more difficulty cognitively putting two and two together and figuring things out or having more difficulty with this word finding or losing my balance more easily or not feeling a bump or a bruise or a scrape, um, that's when I, I think perhaps there's something more going on and flaring that I'm not aware of. And so now I know to communicate that to my primary care and my rheumatologist I am not currently being followed by a neurologist. Um, however, I should be. Unfortunately, in my area, it takes a good eight months or more just to get seen the first time. 
um, but it's still better than nothing. It's still a step in the right direction. And even being followed by a neurologist, there isn't anything that's going to stop this from happening. Not that I know of. Um, the last time I saw a neurologist, um, she prescribed to me Neurontin. And it made me so extremely tired and out of it that I stopped taking it. Now, the Neurontin doesn't prevent the vasculature from being under attack. Therefore, I don't believe it would prevent the white matter disease and those complications. Although, because it's part of the overall systemic part of the Sjogren's, um, continuing to manage my overall Sjogren's by lifestyle changes and by modifying my energy use, my rest, my self-care, and all those things, I do believe can make a difference for putting me out of the flare. It could be that when that's happening, I need a higher dose of prednisone, Although right now at this time, I'm trying to wean off of prednisone so that my osteoporosis can be better under control. We'll see what happens. If I cannot wean off of prednisone, I will have to go on another medication specifically for osteoporosis. And I want to avoid that, truly avoid it because of all the side effects. So I'm sorry this video was longer today. I felt that it was important to link the neurological and the vascular together in the same video. So this is the last video in my series about my symptoms. The next series that I do is going to be involving medication changes and where I'm going from here as far as treatment and what I'm hoping for the future of my Sjogren's progression and how to get myself feeling much, much better. Thank you for spending time with me um, with this video. I hope that it was helpful um, and I truly hope that as you walk through your Sjogren's symptoms, I, I hope and pray that you will advocate for your needs because they are many, they are important. Your symptoms are real. Bye for now.